Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepaksh Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 28th of July. India pays homage to former President Abdul Kalam. Former Pakistan Chief Justice demands inquiry against Imran Khan. And cricket and militancy cannot go together. India wants Pakistan. And now for all the details, Indian government has announced a week-long nationwide mourning to condole the death of former President APJ Abdul Kalam. The 11th President of India, who also played an important role in the country's nuclear development, passed away late on Monday. The mortal remains of former President APJ Abdul Kalam will be flown to Rameshwaram, his hometown in southern Tamil Nadu, where his last rites will be performed. Earlier on Tuesday, his body was airlifted to capital New Delhi from Shillong, where he breathed his last. President Pranam Mukherjee, Vice President Hamid Ansari and Prime Minister Narendra Modi were among the dignitaries who paid respects to Kalam. The two houses of the Indian Parliament were also adjourned for the day after paying tributes to him. The national flag remained flying at half-mast on all government buildings throughout the country as a mark of respect. President Mukherjee said the nation will remember Kalam's contributions in various fields. Dr. Kalam will be long remembered for his passion for science and innovation and his contributions as an eminent scientist, administrator, educationist and writer. Prime Minister Modi said Kalam's vision will continue to inspire the people of India. Sriman Abdul Kalam ji ke nidhan ke samachar pure desh ke liye aur vishwa ki vaigyanik alam ke liye ek bahut hi dukhat samachar hai. Rashtrapati ke roop mein unka karya उनका जीवन उनकी हर बात देश के लिए आज भी दिशादर्शक है Many also felt his demise will leave a void that cannot be filled ever Dr Kalam was uh, not merely the president but he was to every indian a role model and an ideal citizen Everything about him was positive he thought well, he had positive ideas, his contribution as a scientist, his contribution as a president was unparalleled. He's left a void for all of us. Kalam, who was the 11th president of India, died after suffering a cardiac arrest while addressing a group of students at a B school in northeastern Meghalaya on Monday. A wave of despair spread across India as the news about the demise of Abdul Kalam spread like wildfire on Monday. Also referred as the People's President, Kalam was known to connect with the common man. When Dr. Abdul Kalam was rushed to the hospital in Shillong on Monday, people across the nation began praying with bated breath. Two hours later, the sad news left the entire nation in tears. Kalam, who was an iconic leader for the entire nation, continued to be remembered with heavy hearts even on Tuesday. Residents of northern Muratabad held solemn candlelight marches for Kalam. Many said he would continue to inspire the upcoming generations. This is for this country, 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 and for this country, for this country, who are the most important people of their life, एक दिल को छूलेने वाली रही है हमेशा और युवाओं के लिए वो इस उम्र में भी अपने पूरे कार्यकाल के दौरान भी अभी भी शिक्षक रहे मार्गदर्शक रहे और युवा शक्ति को उन्होंने हमेशा प्रेरणा स्रोत रहे युवा शक्ति के Despite having a non-political background Kalam assumed office as the president of India in 2002 and served till 2007 Considered as the most popular state head, he was also referred as the people's president for his humility and love for connecting with the younger generation. 
To pay homage to the popular leader, many schools across the nation also held special ceremonies on Tuesday. While students in capital New Delhi began the day by remembering Kalam, others in provincial capital Lucknow prayed for his departed soul. Schools in several cities across India have been shut for the day to mourn the death of Kalam. His ideas, his sources of inspiration and all his dreams are on us, the students of India and we'll surely try and we'll surely make India a good country as APJ Abdul Kalam wanted it to be. He was an epitome of humility and brilliance. He was a great leader. He was a lover of children. First of all, he was first a teacher and then a scientist and then a president. We really mourn his death and we are very, very sad and sorrowful that we have lost such a great leader today. An aeronautics engineer, Kalam served as a science administrator and scientist with the Defence Research and Development Organisation and Indian Space Research Organisation for over four decades. His close involvement in the country's civilian space program on ballistic missile and launch vehicle technology made him known as the Missile Man of India. Kalam was also instrumental in the country's historic nuclear test in 1998. He was a recipient of several prestigious awards, including India's highest civilian honour, the Bharat Ratna, in 1997. His proximity with the students made him a motivation for the younger generation. Even at the age of 83, he continued to address and encourage many, especially school children, with his inspirational quotes and positivity towards life. His autobiography, Wings of Fire, first published in 1999, still remains a bestseller. According to many, he departed while doing what he loved the most, being among the students while imparting them knowledge about science and technology. At least 21 people have been confirmed dead in a shootout that took place at a wedding in northern Afghanistan on Sunday. The latest incident has once again highlighted the fragile security situation in the war-torn country. Two armed groups got into a dispute at the wedding in Desala district of Baglan province, wounding scores of guests too. According to reports, as the rival groups opened fire at each other, the bullets also hit guests who were not involved in the fight. Those injured continue to be treated at a city hospital. They said the firing started after an argument. <laughs> Fatal gunfights and gunfire are common at Afghan weddings which seldom go out of control, highlighting the delicate security arrangements in the country. A once tranquil province of Baglan has recently been plagued by growing insecurity as the Taliban insurgency continues to spread to the north of Afghanistan from its southern and eastern strongholds. Though no group has claimed responsibility for Sunday's incident, the Afghan Interior Ministry has ordered a probe into the matter. Former Chief Justice of Pakistan, Justice Iftikhar Chaudhary, has demanded an investigation against cricketer-turned-politician Imran Khan for his poll-rigging allegations during the 2013 general elections. A Judicial Inquiry Commission had last week rejected all claims by Khan. Justice Iftikhar Chaudhary on Monday said Imran Khan's motives behind the 126-day sit-in demonstration in capital Islamabad last year were suspicious. Accusing Khan of subverting the constitution and vilifying democratic institutions of the country, Chaudhary said a probe should be launched into his actions. During his protest, Khan had accused Chaudhary of having an involvement in poll rigging. But Khan's Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf had failed to substantiate the claims it had made during the protests. The three member commission had last week submitted its final report to the government, rejecting all allegations of PTI. The prolonged shutdowns by Khan's party demanding the resignation of Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif had caused a loss of over $4 billion to the state exchequer other than causing a political crisis in the country. The State Bank of Pakistan has lifted a 10-year ban to allow money exchange companies to import dollars directly. The move is aimed at improving the dollar supply in the domestic market. 
According to the new directive, the exchange companies have been allowed to import dollars directly or through their accounts for the next two months. The move comes at a time when the country is witnessing a sharp increase in the demand for dollar. The situation had resulted in exchange rates going up drastically. The rates had risen up to 103 Pakistani rupees for a dollar in the past couple of days. Nepal is mulling to drop the word secularism from its new constitution. This comes after a majority of the public expressed dissent against its inclusion in a feedback campaign. On the basis of the suggestions received from the public on the new constitution, Nepalese leaders may remove the word secularism from the charter. According to reports, majority of the people found the word inappropriate, giving preference to the term Hindu or religious freedom instead. Over 80% population of the mountainous nation are followers of Hinduism. The country became a secular state in 2007 after the success of People's Movement. However, many were displeased and a campaign to remove the word had been gaining ground for some time now. Apart from this, other prominent issues include the election of executive heads, rights of backward classes and women, citizenship, electoral provisions for local bodies, demarcation of federal units and judiciary will be addressed while finalizing the constitution draft. Nepal is working towards drafting a new constitution to end the prolonged political instability in the country. Prime Minister Sushil Koirala promised to adopt the new charter at the earliest after taking feedback from the public. Once approved, it will replace the interim constitution of 2007. The militant attack in India's northern Punjab on Monday has once again cast doubts on the revival of cricket between India and Pakistan. The two neighbours had recently agreed to resume bilateral cricket, which has been stalled since 2008. Indian intelligence agencies suspect the involvement of Pakistan-based lashkar e -Toyba in Monday's attack, which killed 10 people. The three militants who were shot dead by Indian security forces are believed to be Pakistanis and entered Punjab through Jammu and Kashmir. Following the incident, the Board for Cricket Control in India, or BCCI, said the proposed bilateral tournament may not happen if such attacks continue. I think you can't expect a cricket series along with terrorist attacks. For me, the safety and security of every Indian is more important rather than a game of cricket. As an, as an Indian, I won't like to see my country as a soft target. For me to go ahead as far as the PCB or the India series is concerned, I think there are many issues which need to be resolved between India and Pakistan. Pakistan Cricket Board had proposed to play bilateral series in UAE in December, the first in nearly seven years. However, the date has not been confirmed by the BCCI. PCB chief Shahriyar Khan had met senior officials of the BCCI in May in an effort to resume the series. India had called off all cricket ties with Pakistan in November 2008 after Pakistani terrorists went on a rampage in Mumbai, killing 166 people, including six Americans. Even though the PCB has made repeated efforts, India has always maintained that terror attacks and cricket cannot happen at the same time. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. India pays homage to former President Abdul Kalam. Former Pakistan Chief Justice demands inquiry against Imran Khan. And cricket and militancy cannot go together. India wants Pakistan. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.